Hey guys, what's up? It's your girl, Andrea Griffin Rogers here with a spiritual wellness check-in that God gave me on this good, good Friday. And it's a fitting title for such a time as this, for such a day as this historically, um, but the day that we celebrate um, Jesus's uh, trial and crucifixion. And the word that God gave me today was embrace the thorn embrace the thorn and i'll explain what that means um you know when god gave me this word actually it was i think about a week ago I think about a week ago he gave me this word and at the time when he gave it to me um i had did a series of videos that some of you may have seen uh where i was talking about i didn't know what was um, chasing me because I didn't know it was my bloodline. And I heard him saying, embrace the thorn. And I was like, oh, that's so good. And I thought I was going to teach it last week. And God said, no, wait. And I didn't understand why God was having me wait. But it's all a part of the process of anything. Anything that you want to develop in life takes a process. And, and I've been learning that with God. You know, he gives me things. He gives me assignments and projects that he wants me to complete. And the biggest blessing that I've been learning is it's not a sprint. It's a marathon. Just because God gives it to you in that very second does not mean he expects it to be fulfilled that very second. He gives it to you to prepare you for what is to come. And so... Um, when he gave it to me, he was saying, wait, I'm not going to lie. I'm a person who has been working on the art of waiting. <laughs> I've been learning it from God because I struggle with wanting to be in control. And so I've been learning to relinquish my control to God and let him take the wheel. And part of that is waiting. And so when he gave me this word of embrace the, th uh, the thorn, I was like, okay, God, you know, it makes me immediately think of Second Corinthians uh, chapter 12, which is where Paul talks about the thorn in his side. And, and I'm going to read that scripture and I'm going to read it in its entirety. I normally don't, but I'm going to be obedient to God and read it in its entirety because I think it's going to help bless somebody out there who needs this word. And I think we all have something a thorn in our side, something that we're struggling with, a person that we're struggling with. It's it's something or some place or someone that just feels like a thorn in your side and you do not understand why you're going through it. Why does it have to be this way? Why this person is in your life or why this thing is happening to you? You're not understanding the process of development that God is doing in your life because it doesn't look good. It doesn't look good. It doesn't feel good. It doesn't look shiny. You're you're not seeing how this murky waters will turn out purifying your clothes as white. But anything that is dirty can be cleansed through a process of washing it or purifying it. And sometimes, and I'll get to the scripture in one second, but I'm just going to flow with the Holy Spirit. Sometimes we think that what we're going through, God doesn't have um, a reason for it or he doesn't have a process with it. There's uh, basically no good that can come from it. You know, it's like that adage that Nathaniel says in the Bible of, can anything good come from, um, you know, Nazareth? And it's the same thing, like, can anything good God come from this situation? And God says, yes, yes, if you just give it to him. When you give it to God and you allow him to do the working in your life and you understand that the storms and the trials you face are only tests, not meant to destroy you, but to make you stronger, to purify the old ways out of you for in order for you to embrace the new way that God has for you, then you understand that I must embrace this thorn. God has not given me the thorn to tear me up or to destroy me or to not have me smelling beautiful or fragrant or to be a blessing in the right season when I blossom and bloom. He's given me the thorn for a reason. It serves a purpose. It's a reason why thorns are on the side of a rose. 
even before the rose blossoms and we see the beautiful rose bushes, the thorns are there to protect it so that it can get to the blossoming stage. The same thing in your life. God is saying today, I need you to embrace the thorn in your life, whatever that thorn is. We all have different thorns in our life. Your, your thorn may be, like I said, a person, a place, or a thing. You may feel like, you know, I'm sick and tired of this car. That's the thorn in your side. You could be like, I'm sick and tired of this job. That's the thorn in your side. You could say, I'm sick and tired of this marriage and I feel like I want to give up. That's the thorn in your side. And God says, if you allow me, if you come to me, all who are weary and carry heavy burdens, he says in Matthew 11, verse 28, he says, I will give you rest. That means when you take whatever your problem is, whatever the thorn that you feel like is in your side, you know, that thing that you say, this is getting on my leg last nerve that's that thorn and when you give it to god he says great i can do something with this the whole reason why we go through tests and trials like i said is to purify something out of us but it's also to get our attention to who we are and whose we are which is god's child he allows the storms to come he allows the tests to come for a reason it is to not to distract us or destroy us. It is to give us purpose and to guide us closer to him. To realize that we cannot do this thing called life on our own. We need Jesus. And so he says, here I am. I have my Holy Spirit. I want to pour out my spirit onto my sons and my daughters. But you must be willing to receive it. You must be willing to own it for yourself. And in that Holy Spirit is peace is gentleness it's kindness is long suffering or perseverance it's forgiveness it's all of these beautiful things it's joy it all comes from the holy spirit you're not going to get these things in the world you're only going to get them from god and so he says if you allow the the pruning process to happen it may be a sickness you're going through right now. You're like, God, can anything good come from this sickness or this disease? And he says, yes, when it's in the right hands. That means when it's not in your hands and it's in his hands. He says in Romans 8, uh, verse 28, he says, and everything will work together. Or he causes everything to work together for the good of them who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. If you claim to love God in your heart, then he says, I have a plan for everything in your life. It is a plan, Jeremiah 29, 11, as it says, to prosper you, not to harm you, to give you a hope and a future. You got to learn to embrace the thorn. The thorn is there to make you stronger. You may say, how can this thorn make me stronger? How can this problem or this process make me stronger? And he says it in the scripture I'm about to read. It's through him, through his grace, through his power that your strength actually comes from. It's not brute, brawn for strength. It is through God. And so let me get to the scripture for you. 2 Corinthians chapter 12. And I'm reading from the New Living Translation. And it says, uh, this is Paul's words. It says, this boasting will do no good, but I must go on. I will reluctantly tell about visions and revelations from the Lord. I was caught up to the third heaven 14 years ago. Whether I was in my body or out of my body, I do not know. Only God knows. Yes, only God knows whether I was in my body or outside my body. But I do know that I was caught up to paradise and heard things so astounding that they cannot be expressed in words. Things no human is allowed to tell. That experience is worth boasting about, but I'm not going to do that. I will boast only about my weaknesses. If I wanted to boast, I would be no fool in doing so because I will be telling the truth. But I won't do it because I don't want anyone to give me credit beyond what they can see in my life or hear in my message. Even though I have received such wonderful revelations from God. So to keep me from becoming proud... Heed those words. So to keep me from becoming proud, I was given a thorn in my flesh, a messenger from Satan to torment me and keep me from becoming proud. Three different times I begged the Lord to take it away. Each time he said, my grace is sufficient or my grace is all you need. My power is 
works best in weakness. So now I'm glad to boast about my weaknesses so that the power of Christ, Jesus Christ, can work through me. That's why I take pleasure in my weaknesses and in my insults and hardships and persecutions and troubles that I suffer for Jesus Christ. For when I am weak, then I am strong. We have to learn as believers to embrace the thorn in our side. Whatever that thorn is in your life, it is there to keep you realizing that you need Jesus. That's the whole thing about keep you from being proud. Because, I mean, we see it today in the world. Many people will give themselves the credit for everything they have in life. Every accolade, every bank account, every financial blessing, um, every car they drive, even the breath in their own body. They give the credit to everything and everyone else but God. I've heard people even say it's their alarm clock that wakes them up in the morning. Well, then what happens to people that died overnight? Did their alarm clocks not go off? Did uh, the rooster not crow to wake them up in the morning? Was there not a loud noise that alarmed them or alerted them to wake up? No. And it's not that those things didn't happen. I mean, no, that's not the power. It is God's power that breathes breath in our bodies. It is only he that has the key of resurrection. So when we go to sleep at night and our bodies are at rest, it's like a, a deathly state, if you will. And it is only him that decides who will awaken that next morning and who would not. And so the fact that you are watching this today, whatever day that is, it may not be Good Friday. You may watch this a, a, a day, two weeks, years later. But know this is the on time word for you, God, for you because God wanted you to receive it today. There are no coincidences with God. Everything has a plan. You may not see the plan. Just like you may not see how a promise is going to come from the problems in your life, the process in your life. But God says, I know the plans I have for you. I know why I've caused the storm to come your way. I know why I'm allowing the things to be shaken up in the way they are. I have a working that is happening. And so we must learn to embrace the thorn. I'll give you one quick example before I go. You know, I remember um, going through my wilderness season, my Job wilderness season. I talk about it all the time uh, on the Ages of Revival podcast, streaming everywhere. So make sure you're listening and subscribing and following the podcast. And I remember, as well as this YouTube channel, and make sure y'all comment at the bottom. I do read the comments and I do respond. So comment at the bottom, like the videos, let me know your thoughts um, and how this message may be blessing you and share with a friend. But anywho, so I remember when I was going through it, the tough time before I got to this point and I didn't see that this was going to happen. I didn't see that. I didn't see you guys at that time. I didn't see how God was going to work it out as I was going through that 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 wilderness season as I was going through bankruptcy and 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 homelessness and um and and stress and pain and suffering and being sued and and um sickness and disease and struggling to stay alive I mean literally fighting to stay alive I didn't know how anything good was going to come from that the the abuse the trauma everything in my life I had no idea what good was going to come from that and I remember just cr constantly crying, playing the victim card of woe is me, God. Why am I going through this? This is horrible. Take the suffering away from me. And just like um, Paul, I will pray to God, Lord, take the suffering away from me, please. I'm tired of being sick. I'm tired of being in pain. I'm tired of hurting. I'm tired of people rejecting me. I'm tired of people treating me badly. I'm tired of the world. I'm tired of all of these problems in my life going around. I'm tired of everything I tried to fix is not being fixed and it's just not working and I don't know what's going on. And I was just so sick and tired of being sick and tired. And I remember praying to God, Lord, take the suffering away from me. And he drew me to this scripture embrace the thorn you got to embrace the thorn change your prayer to god why why me to why not me change your prayer to god why am i going through this to god what are you producing out of me through this change your prayer to god take this away to god what is this teaching me through the process you got to learn how to glean from the experiences of your life 
That's part of embracing the thorn. Asking the Holy Spirit the wisdom of what you are learning through this process. And you may feel like you're not learning something, but you are. Even if the learning is perseverance or long suffering, you're learning how to make it through the days. And that in itself right there is just an amen, a, a, a thank you, God, because I've got through today. I didn't think I can get through today. And some of you out there may be saying that like, Lord, I don't think I can get through today. But you will find yourself getting through every millisecond of every second of every minute of every hour of the day. And when I was going through my tough season, which is what I teach others, you got to just survive through every millisecond of every second of every minute of every hour of every day. You can't even focus on tomorrow because you got to get through today. And that's why he even says in Matthew 6, he says, tomorrow um, has its own troubles. It will bring its own problems. Today's troubles are enough for today. So focus on today and do not worry or be afraid for the Lord is with you. You got to believe that God has a plan for your life. He is not allowing you to go through anything for nothing. There's a purpose and a plan for it all. You must understand, it talks about in Joel chapter 2, that the Lord sent the test your way. And he allows you to feel weak so that you realize the strength is not in you. It is in the Father. And so you must be willing to turn your head to the Lord. Repent means to turn away from the way you're going. Turn away from the way you're thinking. Turn away from your stinking attitude. Turn away from your own uh, cognition and seek God. You do not know the plans for your life. You don't even know your end date. None of us do, but he does. And so since you don't know the plans, the purpose... Or the time that is allotted to you on this earth. Then you got to go to the one who does. And in that, he will give you everything you need. We must be willing to embrace the thorn. It's the only way we're going to go through. Had Jesus not embraced the thorn, we would not be here today. We would not have the salvation that we have. Because he did not come off of the cross. Because he did not take the thorns off of his head. He probably had the biggest headache ever, honey. The biggest migraine ever with those crown of thorns that was placed on his head. Even when they pierced his side. Even when they beat on him and spit on him and ridiculed him. And and were the same ones that, in, that at the earlier of the week during Passover was saying, Hosanna, Hosanna, held the king of Israel. And then literally by the end of the week saying, crucify him, crucify him. They wanted him dead. And you know what Jesus said in Luke chapter 23, verse 34? He said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. People don't know how they treated you. I had a conversation with somebody recently about that. Not every time does somebody, somebody being vindictive or manipulative or mean-spirited, they may not know. And you have to understand the Bible says that we are not fighting against people, but against spirits and principalities. That means that we are not who we see we, that we are in the mirror. This is a fleshly body, but there's a spirit behind it. That's, that means that there's a spirit behind every person you encounter. And so as you encounter these people, you have to understand that there is a spirit in them that is a struggle. They're battling something in their life, just as you're battling something in yours. And so you may look at them and you're like, well, why are they treat me this way? Or why won't they be this way to me or do this or that and the other? You have to understand that whatever is in them is uncomfortable with you. Just like whatever is in you is uncomfortable with them. And so embrace the thorn means I am not going to let whatever is coming up against me block my spirit, block what God wants to do in my life, block my peace, block my joy. And I'm not going to keep begging for God to take it away either. I'm going to use it, 